On my road trip from Vancouver Island to Alabama and back, I took a bit of a detour to southern Utah where I'd get a brief experience of the hot desert, pass through Page, check out Horseshoe Bend, then head back up towards Arches National Park. The Navajo people have a long and rich history in the region around the city of Page. For centuries they lived and thrived in the area, building homes, cultivating crops, and raising livestock. They developed a deep connection to the land and its resources, relying on the Colorado River for water and sustenance. In the mid-19th century, the Navajo people were forcibly removed from their ancestral lands by the U.S. government and forced to march over 300 miles to Fort Sumner, New Mexico. This event, known as the Long Walk, was a traumatic and devastating experience for the Navajo people, who were subjected to harsh conditions and forced to live in a foreign land. But things get better for them. So I just pulled over to this lookout point that's just above the uh, town of Page. You can see this big, big amazing bridge and a dam. I'm going to go drive over that soon. In 1868, the Navajo signed a treaty with the U.S. government which allowed them to return to their homeland. Over time, they began to rebuild their communities and reestablish their way of life. In the early 20th century, the Navajo began to welcome tourists to the area, sharing their culture and traditions with visitors around the world. Today, the Navajo people continue to live and work in the region around Page, preserving their culture and heritage while adapting to the changing world around them. It's amazing, there's a marina down there. I wonder if this ever dries up. The Navajo people play an important role in the tourism industry, sharing their traditions and crafts with visitors and contributing to the local economy. So there's that giant bridge. Despite the challenges they may have faced over the years, the Navajo people remain a vital and enduring presence in the region. There's a visitor center over there. Let's go see if they have a better view over there. When I was traveling through this region, I had no idea of the crisis of the water situation. Lake Powell was formed by this dam, the Glen Canyon Dam, which is fed by the Colorado River. The Colorado River has never been this low in history, with the water level down to 24% of its maximum volume. Just in the past year, it has dropped 16 feet. This is critical as millions of people rely on this water. Not only is this dam impressive, but the views around here are incredible. All right, it's time to go drive over that bridge. The water level is getting so low that soon the dam will not be able to produce power. I feel this will go down in history as a lesson to not build cities in the deserts, let alone have golf courses and other things that drain massive amounts of water. Only time will tell if the city of Page and many others like it will survive the hot temperatures of the desert. So I just pulled over at the Glen Canyon Overlook Trail. I definitely recommend this, I can already tell it's incredible. You just go down this little stair step and then uh, full view of the, the gorge here. These metal railings <laughs> burn your hand. It's like you grab it for stability. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> your hand gets scorched on that. Look at this thing. So I ride at Horseshoe Bend. Uh, surprisingly, it's ten dollars to park. They're really cashing in there. So yeah, you gotta pay to park to go do this 1.5 mile hike in, 1.5 mile hike out, and it's hotter than uh, hotter than death out here. Come on, you. 
为是夏天没有。If you're familiar with Horseshoe Bend, it's basically the most iconic river selfie photo location on Earth. Probably one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful. So, pretty excited. I can see it just over there. Not quite. I can see the uh, canyon though. So I made it to the bend here. Look at this. Horseshoe Bend was formed over millions of years through natural erosion of the Colorado River. It was discovered in the early 20th century by a group of explorers who were amazed by its natural beauty. Over time, Horseshoe Bend has become a popular spot for tourists who are drawn to its stunning views and unique geological features. Today it remains one of the most visited attractions in the region, with visitors coming from all around the world to see it. The canyon walls of this river average a drop of a thousand feet. Below, it's not uncommon to see boats on the river. This place is insane. The views are just unreal. Green water, there's some boats down there. I wish I was swimming in that water right now. There's this really cool black wall over here. It's just unbelievable. After spending some time taking in the views at Horseshoe Bend, it was time to head towards Arches National Park. Now I wouldn't be able to make it there that night as it was too far, so I headed to Gooseneck State Park for an epic campsite. Along the way, I'd pass through Monument Valley. This wasn't planned and simply dumb luck that I'd be here at sunset, which was absolutely incredible. These monolithic rock formations are scattered across a wide area on both sides of the road that snakes through them. So I'm currently driving from Horseshoe Bend over to Arches National Park and I got into this open basin here and check this out. Whoa! There's these big rock spires all around here, and just flat land. What cool landscape, look at this. Look at this, you seeing this? It's killing me that I can't just go fly my drone around that thing. I'm, this is mostly Navajo land. I think it's all Navajo land around here and you can't fly drones. Sadly, we're just gonna have to view it from down here, but man, this is some cool landscape around here. Uh, it's getting a little bit cooler. Uh, the sun's kind of started going down, so it's not like scorching anymore, but the sun out here is just so hot during the day, it just sucks the life out of you. I gotta get out of this uh, state. I don't know if I'm in, I'm thinking I'm still in uh, Arizona, but 
Arizona, southern Utah, it's the same thing. I've been sleeping in Zion for last week and uh, the heat gets stuck in the walls of Zion and it just radiates it at night so it doesn't get it doesn't cool down it just oh it's unbearable so hot so last night I actually slept on top of the Mesa above Zion it was much better much better I just ran into a guy at the gas station who's uh, also a youtuber and he's from Calgary uh, it's just funny because I grew up in Airdrie, which is 15 minutes kind of outside the Calgary airport. So I, I told him I'm from Airdrie initially and he, he's just like, what? But yeah, it's just funny where you meet people. Monument Valley has been a significant part of Navajo history for centuries. The valley is home to towering sandstone structures that hold spiritual and cultural significance to the Navajo people. The area was inhabited by the Navajo long before the arrival of European settlers who named the valley for its remarkable rock formations. Many Navajo families still reside in the valley today and visitors can take guided tours to learn about the Navajo history and culture. The valley has also been a popular location for films and TV shows with the Navajo Nation owning and operating a movie production company in the area. I wasn't expecting such an epic drive. Look at this. This has got to be some sort of national monument or a national park or something. People in a red truck keep waving and honking at me. I don't, <laughs> my vehicle I think is uh, pretty easy to recognize. Maybe they saw me from another trail or something. These rock formations are super cool, but I'm starting to, I'm getting mountain fever. Things I don't like, what I don't like all these rock features is they're always so eroded in a straight down fashion that you can never hike to them. So there are always rock climbing objectives uh, if you're allowed to climb them. So like for hikers, you just like a tourist, you can look at them, but you can't actually get on top of them. So I'm really getting, uh, I want to get back to some mountains and start bagging summits. I'm, I've had some fun in the desert, but it's time to go. I'm still not sure what this is, but it is beautiful. I always seem to be driving through some amazing locations when it's getting too dark. Uh, the top of Zion last night, I could tell it was incredible, but uh, it was just getting so dark. But you know, it, it just is what it is. I don't have uh, months and months and months. I've got three months to do the entire you know, all the way from Vancouver Island to Alabama and back. So I just kind of got to hit up what I can and have major objectives like let Rattlesnake Ledge, Angel's Landing, that kind of thing. So, you know, try my best out here. But uh, the desert is quite nice. It's really peaceful when it's uh, the sun goes down and it's just nice and calm right now. I quite like it at this time of day. <laughs> During the day though, it's just brutal, it's too hot. Join me in the next episode as I wake up to the most epic campsite and head into Moab. A big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode.